is blowing Time as on. we stand currently straight into the face of these Glasgow players and it will be the visitors to get us underway and you're going to see straight away just there the impact of that breeze as it holds up that ball in the air it was well taken by the man starting the match for the first time Jack Dunn in that second row just 23 and his impact off the bench last week was incredible he made 28 tackles in 44 minutes and he's in alongside Devin Toner this afternoon for most of the season these two sides have been top of their conferences as I said Glasgow coming here now a couple of points behind Munster following their bonus point win in Treviso last night Michael Bent gets his hands on it coming in on the tight head side of that front row Ross Byrne back in he was the match winning hero in the European quarter final against Ulster remember didn't play last week and he kicks it back in behind to that Glasgow 22 where it's picked up by Stuart Hogg. He can't quite get away from Joe Tamani. Rock. Rock. Very interesting Use tactically it. how these two sides go about their business this afternoon with so much talent. Glasgow, we know all about their counter rocking and turnover. We know all about the back three and how Use they it. like to counter attack also. And they're going to try and run this out of their 22. There's a Glasgow player, meantime, uh, receiving some attention right on halfway. Rock! That's James Tracy over that. Glasgow pinned back inside their own 22. Hardy makes way. Use that. Comes Ali Price. Try score against France and the Six Nations. Ali Price and he hoists one up here. I think it's James Batty who's been attended to. That's gone backwards off a of Glasgow hand and after a lively opening two minutes the ball into touch and the opportunity for me to say good afternoon and welcome to Liam Toland and Hugo Seufel. Liam. What an excellent exit from Leinster, a really good kick and you mentioned the wind, it's a huge barrelling wind all the way in favour of Leinster but in many cases when you're attacking with that wind it can be awkward. Leinster front row, second row and back row all carry to build phases and Ross Byrne did something which he didn't do against Ulster in the European Cup match. He decided that the onrushing Glasgow defence are going to keep them honest and drills it down to Hogg. A really good exit from Leinster, good start but unfortunately we have an injury already. Yeah, they're going to lose their captain Glasgow, uh, I thought it was James Buddy, in fact it's... Um, it's not us, their captain Chris Fusaro over on that far side, so Adam Ash is going to come in. Yeah, you could just see him in midfield there, he went, he's jackling over the ball, got cleared out, obviously took one awkwardly. I oh, know it was there actually, it was a kick follow through from Ross Byrne, just caught him on the hip. One stop, going and to backwards. lose Chris Fusaro, key influential figure for this Glasgow side so early, Use it. pretty damaging. It certainly is with all the experience and uh, he brings to that back row and there's a, a measure of that wind again. All coming straight back in the Glasgow faces. No. We have to adjust the tactics now. Here's Sean O'Brien. Gibson Park gets that Leinster machine rolling forward with Ed Byrne, who had a cameo off the bench in the back row last week due to a couple of late enforced changes. There's that man Jack Dunn again. All action last week, as I said. Ross Byrne now and Henshaw. Straight away, there's that direct running. Larmer, danger running out of pitch over on that far side. Back inside to Devon Toner. Great to see him back in action. Appearance number 228 for the big man today. As I mentioned, Jack Dunn alongside him. It's his fifth appearance on his first start. And that was intended for Ross Byrne. It went in behind him. And here's an opportunity potentially now for Glasgow on the little hack through from Seymour. Will it sit up for him? Was he taken out of it by Ross Byrne? Marius Matreya is right there and we have high drama inside the opening four minutes and Leinster will be down a man which can you know? wait and you have to say good patience Number in defence from uh, Glasgow there they just sucked they just absorbed phase after phase they were very much more offensive in the tackle in no, midfield what that did it allowed yeah, it uh, the Glasgow defence to wrap around the far side and they always had the numbers we put, we to come up a bit more aggressively the and they force the error and Tommy Seymour you sort of thought here just get your hands on it <laughs> but in the end uh, he's been penalised, he's been fouled from behind, tackled it's from behind, number it's number 11, and a yellow post. card, and the first chance, chance the here for Glasgow. Post. 
It's oh. an interesting, Hugo. It's an yeah. interesting tactical for uh, scrum half Ali Price when he's trying to box kick out. The traditional box yeah. kick is a real yeah, lottery, isn't it? Rolling. And the problem when you do that box kick and if you give possession to Leinster aside, thank who can you. build the phases and build the phases, you rely then on a broken field breakdown like that. But that doesn't happen too often from Leinster. No, and I think the wind's that strong. It's, it's almost gale force where you've just got, I think you've just got to play from deep. You've got to hold on to ball, frustrate this Leinster side. They want the ball kicked back to them. That back three, the two Carney brothers uh, and Jordan Larmore as well. You know, there's so much threat there. Do not kick loosely against his back three. So perfect early opportunity into the win for Adam Hastings. And he strikes it well, no mistake whatsoever. And they are three points to the good, and they are a man to the good. Well, gotta, you've got to give Ross Burns some uh, credit for his wheels to keep up with Tommy Seymour. He was more than a match pace-wise. Yeah, he really was, and uh, he did well to react quickly as well. It was him that threw the pass uh, onto the floor in between a couple of the Leicester players, but he trapped back well. In the end, uh, took one for the team. Well, I think he's directly in behind Tommy Seymour and he's just trying to judge when it might bounce up into the bread basket and can he legally make a tackle but the cavalry was arriving in the shape of James Tracy and Dave Carney and as it is Leinster without their fly half so here they go with Price and Hastings again Glasgow galvanised by the yellow card and the early penalty let it in. It was very different last week when they fell behind quite early to Ulster, but they felt their way into the game and they were very strong thereafter. And that's loose from Hogan into touch. And Jamison Gibson Park just for a fraction of a second, which keen to go early. Yeah, and those are the areas you've got to be you've got to be so solid, you've yeah, got to be so, your execution's got to be spot on. If you're gonna run from deep, if you're gonna keep hold of the ball, you have to go through 15, 20 phases and, and not cough the ball up that easily. But obviously Ali Price has decided that kicking game isn't the strategy, so they want more reward from this uh, ambitious attack from inside their 22. More! Devon Turner back in there calling the line out. Lots of variation no, from a Lancaster right, point of view, and there's a little bit of a rush of the blood to head from Adam Ash on Devon Turner. The line out meantime was taken by Keelan Doris. 26 tackles for Keelan Doris last week against Benetton. Use he and Max Deegan were excellent in that Leinster back row. Straight into the hands of Henshaw, who feeds to Mani and his outside centre partner this afternoon. Dave Carney goes in, feeds Ed Byrne. He's having a terrific season. Away goes Michael Bent, the New Zealand born Irish international, back in to that front row and here's Sean O'Brien and was that a little bit high out goes the arm of Marius Mitraya potentially something more here for an answer now as they look to hit back the 14 back against 15 it's hard to know exactly who's slotted into the Leinster 10 there all sorts of players are popping up as first receiver Gibson Park gets it away to Tamani and he gets those legs pumping in Leinster up to five meters here the captain Sean O'Brien good carry from him again still the advantage for the high tackle he get it away to burn both he and his brother Brian Byrne have been prolific try scorers this season for Leinster. Gibson Park assesses the options. Use it. Keelan Doris is one. Josh Murphy is one. And here's Tracy rolling away out of the tackle, and it's slow ball, no advantage coming. Back we go for the penalty. High tackle. I was about to say they'd almost want to take the three points there. Number two. Glasgow. It felt like seven was coming. The momentum they were creating, every carry from Sean O'Brien from Michael Bent, yeah, they were just getting over the gain line. It just gave them that space in the outside channel. I'm sure they'll just uh, look to slot this easy kick over to make it 3 all. Well, they're without a recognised kicker, if you like, and in these conditions, I just wonder, will that uh, have an influence on what they're going to do here? Okay, Rob Carney showed an interest, but as it is in tricky conditions, nothing simple without Ross Burns, so they'll go to the corner. But throughout all those phases, like there was no natural out half stepped up to take control of it. It just shows you the power of the Leinster systems that they didn't necessarily need it. But as the game goes on, you, you definitely need a 10 because they need to control in general and, and manage all the resources. A lot of times this season it would have been no reads. Prerogative to go in there. He started a lot of games at 12, but of course quite happy to play at 10 as he did last week before being forced off early in the game with an injury. There's another advantage here. 
Glasgow need to be careful just to keep this penalty count down, particularly inside their own 22, otherwise it's 14 aside. Follow yes, back slowly from O'Brien to that man, Michael Bent again. Still advantage if you want. Gibson Park waits. In goes Murphy. Oh, and it's picked up here by Keelan Doris. That was a good tackle, and it had to be. Here's Toner now. Devin Toner just three metres shy of the Glasgow so line. Advantage offside. They've advantage. gone low to Henshaw here. Release two. No. Absolute and arrow of a pass from Gibson Park. And now he throws one all the way over the top. And Carney. And Dave Carney gets in. And there was a sense of inevitability about it from a Leinster point of view. It was managed by Jemison Gibson Park. They tried and tried to go straight through the front door. In the end, the vision of the scrum half, the space for the winger, and the feet to finish. You could probably trace that back to Glasgow's exit strategy. They decided not to kick because they can't kick, and all of a sudden they're soaking up amounts of pressure and phase after phase. Their, their defence stayed very, very strong, and it was a wild, wild pass and a one and one So really the advantage was still in Glasgow defensively, but superb feet from Dave Carney to get across. Yeah, and brilliant pickup from Robbie Henshaw. He got fired the ball by Gibson Park, just stepped on the on the pass and uh, just created a bit of space, create that quick ball, and then good vision there from uh, from Gibson Park and in that position. Hiding to nothing for Stuart Hoggett fullback. Twenty-eighth try in Leinster colours for Dave right. Carney. You have to drop kick it, okay? Wonder how much practice old Joe Tamani's done. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be interesting, particularly with a scrum half lying in front of him at the same time. It's not a bad effort, I can tell you, but he just hasn't managed to judge it. Only a couple of feet to the left of the uprights, but it's Leinster back in front. Now, what's so impressive about Leinster there? They're down to 14 men. You know, it just doesn't phase them. You talked about, I was speaking to Felipe Contefermi before the game, and he was saying that the best thing, that they had a game earlier in the season where Johnny Sexton pulled out, Ross Byrne stepped in. It's not about who steps in, it's about the structures they've created at Leinster uh, to make it easy for those guys to step in, and we've seen it just there in the last five minutes. Yeah, we've seen it over the last 18 Use months that. and more since Leo Cullen and his backroom staff have really put their imprint One, on no, this team Rockford. after what was a difficult start three years ago Save but they all three. sing off the Save same hymn sheet now. Glasgow four in the backfield Use covering it. so this is real attack opportunity if Leinster want to run it rarely will you get four in the backfield yeah that's exactly right and they've almost anticipated it with a win from deep that Leinster are going to kick but if Leinster can spot that space you know there's one team that can make the most of it and as a result of the wind and the depth of the kick from Gibson Park there was no challenge on Tommy Seymour and it's Glasgow ball approaching halfway. Hastings tries to get away from Michael Bent. And it goes now to Fraser Brown and through the hands go Glasgow. We've seen so much of this season. They've been excellent. Matt Fagerson now. The ball is always available. No Price. Fraser Brown again. Gets them moving Good. forward. Solid challenge coming in there from Josh Murphy. Tonsillitis last week forced his uh, late withdrawal. He was replaced on that side by Max Deegan with Scott Penny coming in. Now Hastings, what can he manufacture here with Hogg potentially? Had a little look to see what the options were and they sling it wide to this man, Matawalu. Can he find a little bit of open country? Devin Toner was, did well to pull eight. out of that before he was Brew. risking number eight offside. whistle. Keelan Doris is Red offside, bandage. penalty coming here for Glasgow. Carried into contact by Rob Harley, wearing six this afternoon. Missed. Having been shifted there from the second row, Adam Ash coming in. And there's an opportunity here for Hogg and straight wide to Matawalu. Leinster get the numbers Good. there. Here they come again though. That's a good tackle from Tamani. Putting Ali Price back two or three yards through comes Ball Toner. Out, no problem. No, no advantage, advantage coming. Back we go for the penalty. Uh, much better from yeah. Glasgow. What I've liked about Adam Hastings, just to Number talk eight. about Adam Hastings for a bit, over the last few or Number four weeks, he's, he's really played at the line. His decision making at the line has been so much better. And he's just getting this Glasgow, this Glasgow juggernaut. When they get a bit of momentum, when they get the possession that they need and the continuity, they're very difficult to stop. And we saw there, probably should have made a bit more out on the left-hand side there. 
three on two, good defence from Leinster though, just snuffing it out. But you, you can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to suck the Leinster defenders narrow, and as soon as they get a couple of phases when they suck them narrow, then they're going out wide. Could Stuart Hogg have carried that ball in two hands and fixed the last defender before he released? I don't know, but you can see what they're doing. Up the middle and then attack where the, the lack of space is or the lack of players are from Leinster point of view. Yeah, the, the Stuart Hogg probably, by his standards, probably should have held on to it a bit longer, just pulling that last man. But uh, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, end, uh, they couldn't ask, quite finish it, but they've got an opportunity here just to sneak it back to one point. To ask. Don't risk it, OK? Should be straightforward, but uh, nothing really straightforward for the kickers this afternoon. Yeah, plenty of conviction and confidence behind that one. And from straight in front, Glasgow retake the lead courtesy of the boot of Adam Hastings with his second penalty of the afternoon. Ross Byrne is back with us, so we are back at 15 aside. Yeah, first real time that Glasgow have had a chance to keep hold of the ball, to get out of their half and play rugby in the right areas and certainly made the most of it. Probably could have come away with a bit more, but they'll be happy with the three points. Just keep plucking away at that scoreboard, just keep building it. Carried into contact again by the combative Fraser Brown, and again Glasgow find that line break now. They find great support. A oh, wonderful opportunity here for Sam Johnson. And he just fends off Ross Byrne and Sam Johnson is in for the Glasgow try. And the Warriors have hit the front in real style here. It's another typically brilliant line break from deep inside their own half. And they cut Lancer open. Tim Oli. But he's going to have a look here, isn't he? Is it forward pass maybe from Ali Price? The last ruck before the break is made by on number three, Blue. So I'm going to put it on the screen for you now. Taking okay. obstructions, possible yes, obstructions. Yes, taking a player beyond the ball. Okay, okay interesting. Well, certainly the line break from behind the base of the ruck was clean. There was no uh, scrum half. Like Leinster Irish rugby don't put their scrum half in that defensive position anymore. So if you get through there, you it's get a clean FD run. Morris. So I think it's the next breakdown. Which went to clean it on number three. Where there's no natural scrum half defending that area. Where you, okay, back okay. in the day, you'd have had a guy there, but there's a clean. Yeah, the only thing I can think is he's, it looks like, is he, okay. is he talking so about them taking him out past the, the wall, the clean out? They and take him out. And then gets cleared out by there, two men. And creating just the space brought to ground so I think it'd be pretty unfortunate to uh, number six I think he's it is not part of the ruck anymore seven, blue uh, Glasgow is entitled to play number three blue because he's part of the tackle so he's being cleared out so it's not the first man standing besides so for me it's a legal clean out unless, you can see there unless you show me. it looks like he's saying for him it's no, right. that's all the angles we have happy 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 that's fine I think he'd be okay, pretty so harsh for me, the, but for me he was part of the good. breakdown he was part of the whole engagement the, the traffic if you like the general traffic he was in the process so of making the tackle try. okay thank yeah, you stands try try now number three is part of the tackle so he's entitled to be cleared out he's not he was just it's two on one so it's normal just to go one meter over okay so it's it's not the last man thank you so he explains the decision to the Leinster captain, Sean O'Brien, but the try from Sam Johnson, the man who scored for Scotland against Ireland, of course, uh, in the Six Nations, gets one here at the RDS. Brilliant awareness from Ali Price. Well, what Sean O'Brien was asking was, at what point do you quit that process? He was definitely part of it, therefore he was entitled to be driven out. The two guys came in, they came in uh, yes. through the gate or whatever technical word you want. So that's fair play. Yeah, I have to say, I think that is fair play. I mean, sometimes there's different interpretations of it, isn't there? And Maris Betrayers, I think, made the right decision there. I just want a, a word on, uh, we spoke, Liam, about uh, Sam Johnson beforehand. Spl slightly unlucky to, halfway through the Six Nations, be, be just zoned out. He was probably one of the star backs for, for Scotland. And he is, he is an outstanding talent. Support line, brilliant there. But Ali Price, it was all about Ali Price. It's all about, in these conditions, playing into the wind, your decision-making has to be spot on and he got it absolutely spot on there and the support line to finish it from Sam Johnson was outstanding. Over the top it goes from Hogg and all of a sudden 16 minutes in the ball has been thrown around no, not in typical Glasgow it. style. They come into the game of course as we know as the no. team with the most clean line breaks in the Pro 14. They average 11 again and we've already seen three or four inside the opening 16 minutes and they kick the ball fewer times than anyone else. Leave seven. Johnny Gray, Centurion last week against Ulster. 
Yeah, yeah. Good nice shot from Sean O'Brien as well, whilst carrying into traffic. Blue. Advantage. Uh, and, uh, it's been picked up by TMO there. Stafford. That was Sean O'Brien landing a, a ten peg shot. Penalty. Yeah, we both looked at each other. And he's not going to get away with that. Number seven, no arms tackle. Just outside the 22. I tell you what, this is Number not a position seven, you want no as, a, as a kicker, kicking to touch, middle of the pitch, Thanks, on the 22. It seems like a long way to the touchline. And Sean O'Brien's physical body shape, like he's so powerful in his core that all he has to do is, is enter any form of contact and he's going to do damage. But he's got to get his arm around, he's got to land a proper tackle, and that's a fair call from the referee. Yeah, and you've got to... He sounded very frustrated by the referee's interpretation, the breakdown, and I think he hinted, well, if that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. So he brought a bit of his own uh, yeah, but <laughs> interpretation. Uh, but you need to make an attempt to wrap your arms. Yeah, and you've got to keep your shoulder away from the head and neck area, that's for sure, or you risk further sanction. And Hugo was exactly right about the wind, using all his kicking experience. That ball barely made it to the first row of the stand. Cummings takes the line out, fired in field through the try scorer, Sam Johnson from Ali Price, and Ross Byrne comes up on the line to make the hit. Price again, pop one back inside, it was speculative at best. Matt Fegerson tries to tidy it up from a Glasgow point of view. Hastings. Carney brothers are back there, and that's Rob who takes seniority. And Dave comes in to protect the ruck. And away goes Ed Byrne. Missed it, two. No Byrne brother, twin on the bench this afternoon. Ross Byrne now to Henshaw. Right, it goes to Larmer. Back inside to Tamani. Can he get beyond Fagerson? Matawalu goes in there just to try and slow things down. And here comes Devin Toner. Ross Byrne, plenty of options as always with ball in hand, and one of those is Dave Carney. But the Glasgow defence did really well just to, to suck him in there into that cul-de-sac. Back in behind it goes from Sean O'Brien to Robbie Henshaw. Tamani now. Well, Tamani, it's a very strong handoff, and then he's smashed in the tackle. Still, the physicality is uh, ramping up here. Almost through the first quarter of the game. Glasgow leading 13 points to five. And Leinster have turned the ball over in no contact. Matter. You've got to give credit to Glasgow there. I, I felt the, penalty, the opposite was going to happen. I felt a few more phases and they were Number going to be two, broken by, by this Leader. Leinster side. Leinster, you always feel if they go beyond five or six phases, you're in trouble. The one thing I would say, though, Hugo, is that Glasgow, when they're carrying the ball, are, have a tip-on option or a, a pop back inside, regardless. Of, whereas all those phases were, were one carry up, powerful carries from Tony and these guys, but they weren't necessarily looking for an offload and looking to give somebody else the ball or the space. But that's a subtle difference, maybe, between Glasgow and what Leinster are doing. And Leinster, now, that's four penalties to one. So with that wind, Leinster are handing all the opportunity to Glasgow. Yeah, I would agree with that, and there is options for Glasgow. I mean, we haven't seen as much uh, possession in the right areas for Glasgow, but when they've had it, they have looked a real threat, and I, I think that comes, okay. as you say, from three options every yeah. time the 10 gets the ball. We heard Leo Cullen before the okay, game talk you. about how Leinster needed to be accurate when they arrive, when the players arrive at the breakdown to protect the ball carrier and get replacing there in time. The number 22, Pete Horn, replacing number 12, Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson has been uh, forced off here, so Peter Horn comes in. And again, that is not a change. Uh, no disservice uh, to Peter Horn, but they play in a completely different way. Out. Peter Horn is, a, is almost yes. like an additional 10. He's another ball player. Sam Johnson direct creates a platform for this uh, this Glasgow pack to get around the corner for the backs to exploit the space out wide. So it's, they might have to just adjust their approach a bit with Peter Horn at 12. Yeah, he played at fly half for uh, Scotland against France in the Six Nations. Glasgow's lineout continues to work pretty well with Cummings, the target once again. Back inside it goes from Hastings, quick hands and Glasgow very alert. Hastings to Hogg now, can he get away from Ross Byrne? Price, no way through on this occasion initially from Johnny Gray, and now Hogg, good awareness from Sean O'Brien. 
Jim, Jimmy Batty in there and they get it moving to Cummings support was good as well to the ball carrier here and Leinster's defence sets once more oh that's loose Matawalu picks it up Larmer almost got his hands on it and the big Fijian needs no second invitation one was out Sean O'Brien quickly out of that Leinster line that was Peter Horn's first real involvement and it's good appetite for the tackle from Tamani making life difficult they've driven Glasgow back 15-20 metres here I tell you, Stuart Hogg has really taken ownership of field position. He's offering himself every time around scrum half. Loitering in there, just behind. He's coming down the blinder open, giving that option. A few howls from down beneath us as Adam Ash uh, cleared a Leinster player out. Here is Hogg. Gets his pass away. It was difficult for Adam Ash, and it's been picked up by Ross Byrne. Advantage over. Just watching there, Hugo, I, he, Hug, he, he obviously realises the importance, but he has the ability when he's carrying the ball to kind of suspend time momentarily. There's no one getting a clean hit on him, and he just he, he just seems to burn the clock so well, but he's offering himself in around that neutral oh, blinds move. area for scrum half to pop up and give him an opportunity, blindside or open. Yeah, benefit of playing fullback, you can see exactly what's going on in front of you, and you can pop up in, in different areas to be the support runner. But I agree with you, what he's really good at is... It, it, he waits for the descent defenders to, to sort of make a decision before he, 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 he decides what he's going to do. And it looks as if it gives him far more time on the ball. Blue. Out, blue. Hog again. Hogging possession. He's seen so much of the ball in the opening 22 minutes here. That's Johnny Gray brought to ground and here's Scott Cummings. Only 22, he's having a very good season. That's carried on with interest from Fraser Brown. Decent pickup in there from Harley Knight. What can they manufacture with that man Hastings? No, he's, the ball is always available. It's Glasgow dominating possession. Him. Hey. Really good spell in the game for them. Can they find some kind of purchase though and penetration? Tackle now, release, please. Tackle six. That was a Thank pretty you. fine hit from Josh Murphy, the blindside wing forward from Leinster, stopping a dead, in fact, knocking him back. The player who made his debut against today's opposition in 2017, Josh Murphy. Roll, blue. Leave. Another of the young back row brigade coming through, 23. And that's a penalty against Robbie Henshaw. Yeah, I thought that was pretty harsh. It's difficult to difficult to see on the far side. I think he's, he's penalised Robbie Henshaw for not rolling away. I don't think Jordan Lamore, who came in, Lamore, who came in on the ball, actually was uh, doing a perfect job. I think it was a Robbie Henshaw not rolling away. They had uh, Glasgow exactly where they wanted them in defence there, Leinster, and frustratingly gave a penalty away. Let's go, please. Tell you guys, really controlling uh, proceedings, Ali Price. Not just for the try, obviously the break, but you can see him chatting, just getting forwards in the right positions. Different sort of player to George Horn. For me, when George Horn and Adam Hastings are playing, they're too, uh, too maverick almost together. You know, to have George Horn coming off the bench is absolutely outstanding, but to have Ali Price, their bit of experience controlling things, has been really good in this first 25 minutes. Once again, it's Johnny Gray, the target in the line, while well found by Fraser Brown. Now Hastings, Hogg inevitably runs a good line, and on a shorter line coming in, off his wing, Matawalu, mixing things up here at Glasgow, trying to change the point of the attack and keep the Leinster rear guard guessing. Turnover ball now, and away goes Murphy. Support from the captain, Sean O'Brien. Leinster up over halfway very quickly. Lost now, off your feet, off your feet, leave. Glasgow managed to slow it down. Devon Toner gets it away to Tracy. Didn't really have anywhere to go to his left-hand side. Only Henshaw was there. Gibson leave Park now. Sir. Ross Byrne has spotted a little bit of a gap. Jack Dunn gets there in support. So too, Ed Byrne. Gibson Park. I'll tell you, Hugo, some of the Glasgow defenders are looking to fatigue a little at this stage. You know, they put a mammoth effort at this stage, put themselves 13-5, 13-6, 13-7, 13-8, 13-9, 13-10, 13-11, 13-12, 13-13, 13-14, 13-15, 13-16, 13-17
in front but there's a couple of the front five are beginning to stroll out of position not quite working hard enough to get back into defence that's dangerous for from a Leinster point of view Time yeah off. if they get that second pass in you feel the, the options for Leinster aren't quite there at the moment you, you said it already but they almost need to get that second pass in and just test the fringes get it outside uh, th those two or three forwards who are really struggling to work around that far side here I sort of felt they could have kept the ball in hand you know, like they've made all the hard yards, they've, they've worked hard, they've tired out those, those Glasgow forwards, just keep hold of it. There's nothing at all wrong with that hit, that's a, a massive turnover hit, knocking the ball carrier back and also gaining ball possession. Just look at the penalty stakes, Leinster at 5-1, to one, which is, every time Leinster give away one of those penalties, it allows Glasgow just to burn the clock and take the tempo out of the game and obviously hold possession. So that's, that. if, if Leinster just tidied that part of the game up, it would make a big difference in these closing minutes of the first half. Yeah, and especially at this stage, uh, you know, when you're playing into the wind as well, you, you want that respite, you want to just burn down the clock, you want to get into half time. If you can get into half time with a lead for Glasgow, that's absolutely psychologically wow. huge. Yeah. Good. Oh, interesting game. Down in Galway, Connacht in front with a try, but uh, the Cardiff Blues have hit back. all the permutations and what a weekend of rugby Connor like between yeah. last night and the Munster what an amazing victory for Munster yesterday against all the odds in many senses and down in Galway there's another cracker evolving hey stay tight stay very very tight more between still three or four teams to try and join Ulster, Leinster Munster and Glasgow in the playoffs will it be Cardiff will it be Cardiff four Will Benison get there? Edinburgh still in the conversation. The ball is uh, trapped in underneath. Josh Murphy. You can hear you can you can hear all the Leinster players telling the referee exactly what they think. A variety of different interpretations of the breakdown and the laws. You can hear them all shouting "Mole, Mole!" Telling the referee they'd kept it off the floor and it needed to be a turnover. And I think Maris Matreira, after giving five penalties against Leinster, decided this time. It was going to be in Leinster's favour, and rightly so. Mind you, it's on, the, it's on the floor there, but it just wasn't coming quick enough. It's the first scrum. Okay. The first scrum after nearly a half an hour of rugby in these conditions. That's extraordinary uh, skill set from both sides. Uh, as you say, that says a lot about the skill set. And it really has been in these conditions, it has been top draw. Crouch! Scrummaged very well last week against Ulster. Very much in the Up, ascendancy in that department. I don't know, Hugo, if you're aware Both of the loose head uh, debate here in Leinster with uh, Jack McGrath, who's been, had a horrible in, uh, season with injury, has just come back. Ed Byrne and Peter Dooley, but Ed Byrne has been he's, sensational, he's and obviously you've got okay. Keane Healy. It's, it's just that game, battle so alone with, right. with okay. the games coming ahead. There's a real come debate on. over who should be selected Everybody ahead of Keane Healy or who should be behind him. Also, it's really interesting subplot. I don't know if you're aware of it, but this guy Ed Byrne's a, a cracking loose head prop. Well, yeah, it's great to see him getting so much game time. I mean, he's uh, he's played a lot. You know, you've got the likes of Keane Healy. Keane Healy's been injured uh, quite a bit, but he has been an absolute stalwart over the years, and I've always loved watching Keane Healy. When Keane Healy's on the rampage, there's no, there's no better sight. Boys. When you're in the safety of the far side of the pitch or something, isn't it? Square, I'm just standing okay. at the back where I was I'm anyway, so <laughs> way out the way of all that. Well, I fancy we'll see him in the second half. We Let's might go. see Tag Furlong and Sean Cronin as well, the three that most likely will start on Easter Sunday against Toulouse, when they will need Kane Hilly to be at his rampaging best, as he was when they beat them here in the group stage. Crouch! Bye. Set. Advantage, play advantage. Advantage coming here as Keelan Doris controls the ball at the base of that Leinster scrum, taken on by Henshaw. On the short they go from Gibson Park. Good awareness again to pick out Larmer. Still advantage if you are nine. Toner waits and it's Keelan Doris as well. Harley can't stop him, back for the penalty. Glasgow offside. Well, they've gone quickly here with Gibson Park to Larmer. Roll! Leinster comes seeking their second try of the afternoon and they look to their captain, Sean O'Brien. Tracy is over the ball, Jack Dunn is there as well. Ed Byrne takes it on. Leinster going through the phase is now O'Brien once again. 
Michael Bent goes in. Jack Dunn waits. Makes another yard or two, and Edburn will look to do the same around the corner. No real latch on, it's uh, single man carries at this point. Tracy now in behind Sean O'Brien. No way through as yet. Josh Murphy. A brilliant defence, to be fair to Glasgow as well. They've kept the shape across the line. Yeah, they kept everyone on their feet, and you see there all the Leinster players around the ball. Only got attacking set up one way at the moment. On the fringes on the pick and jam again from Ed Byrne. Use it. Carney waits poised should they decide to go wide. Not a day for crossfield kicks really for Ross Byrne, but if anybody can execute them, he can. It's very much his forte, but it's up to the forward pack and Jack Dunn. And is there a little gap there for James Tracy? No way through. Resilient, robust defence and plenty of ballast from the Warriors as well. Past the half hour mark. Progress, if any, is slow at this point as we reach phase 11. Gibson Park, change of direction, two on two on the outside. Matawalu and Hastings. Now, where is that going to end up? No. It's back on the Leinster side. Good no. tackle again from Ali Price. He's had a very effective 31 minutes, as Hugo's been saying. These are an end product here, time and again, particularly here at the RDS this season. When Leinster get up around 15, 20 phases, they find a way through. They wear the opposition down. They're endeavouring to do so this time with Michael Bent, the tight head. Ed Byrne. Again, it's a strong tackle from Fraser Brown. And that's the value of having a big, big meaty second row like Johnny Gray there. He does some damage in the defence around the fringe. Glasgow hand on it, I think it was Adam Ash, but he's uh, cleared out of the situation. I think Josh Murphy might have taken a bit of a knock in that previous phase. Leinster carry on as they approach 20. A little bit loose at the base there, it was uh, picked up by Ed Byrne. Gibson Park now, what are his options? Henshaw, and he does beat the first tackler, he almost got away from Sander Fagerson too. Gibson Park now to Sean O'Brien. That's a little bit quicker for the Lancer scrum half now. Recycled better and clear out is good from the team in blue. Michael Bent, Gibson Park again. Flat to the line goes Keelan Doris. In goes Larmorin, Tracy. Back against the green goes Jamison Gibson Park. Run! All of a sudden, Lancer are back out 15 metres and more. 25 phases now. O'Brien waits and collects. In right. goes Ed Byrne, Harley tries to slow it down and turn it over. Now they go wide to Keelan Doris and he pops one away to Carney. Two against one over on that far side. And Carney outnumbered and ball back in field, but they're up to five metres again and there's a little bit more impetus about this Leinster attack. 30 phases now. Jack Dunn. That looked a little bit high, yeah, that's going to be a Leinster penalty now. Potential shot to nothing now if it comes back to Gibson Park. Tracy still no has it. High tackle number three. What an amazing set from both sides. It's a high we have a high the discipline to keep hold of the ball by three from Leinster. Leinster. Quite direct, not really offering too much. Glasgow seemed to always have, I think the, the way they, the, the, the offensive tackle each time, because they were so dominant and so strong in the contact area, they managed to keep more players on their feet than Leinster every time. So there's no real space for Leinster to go to. Well, that's why someone like Johnny Gray, he's, he's a force multiplier. He's knocking, like he's counter-rooking and he's really putting uh, pressure on, on, on uh, Gibson Park at scrum half. Really good play. I have some sympathy for the defending side because the first hit was, was legal and then the, as he's tunnelling through Dunn is, what are you supposed to do as a defender? Are you supposed to opt out of the tackle there? That's, it's an awkward one to get right, that one. Prime opportunity for Leinster. Oh, a little bit loose. It was Doris initially. Josh Murphy was there, and they're outside the 22 with Ross Byrne. Now, can they make amends? Dave Carney. Tackled by Fraser Brown. Done again. Now, what's the referee or potentially join Evelyn on the near side spotted here? They're offside every single black for offside but you, as you blew your whistle number eight black offside yes. okay thank you we stopped the game but before it was number eight black offside so we start with a penalty offside. 
outside. So it's another Leinster penalty and it's another one to be pinged down into that Glasgow corner. Just shows you the pressure that Leinster are putting on this Glasgow defence. The, the penalties now are stacking up on the Glasgow side, which gives you an insight Open. into the pressure. Let them go to ground. Like, it's ruthless. The amount of effort and energy to defend it, but also to ensure that you control the ball. So anytime Leinster are carrying the ball, there's two guys clearing out. It's exhausting trying to keep the technical side of that going. Yeah, you wonder what effect those will have 20 minutes before the end of the game. And this time, there's a switch in the line-out. Devon Toner came forward to get airborne at two and take it, and away goes the Leinster number two, James Tracy. It's there for Gibson Park. Henshaw. Tamani goes in. Again, Gibson Park loses his footing just as he was about to deliver that pass. They're offside again here. Testing the patience of Marius Mitrea, the referee. Burn. Oh, it's been juggled, and it's Rob Carney. And Rob Carney gets the try. And it took an age for it to come, and it's taken quite a while for Rob Carney to smile in celebration of a Lanster try because that is his first since 2016. It's only his second try in Lanster colours for five years plus, but he took it well after he juggled. Yeah, fully deserved from this Lanster side. They've put Glasgow under so much pressure for the last five or ten minutes. You thought they were going to go in there with Tracy, but then a little juggle there. Luckily, it was in the breadbasket. He managed to pop up okay. straight into his hands. And Rob Carney, you can see the delight on his face. But the pressure has told. It was coming for the last 10 minutes. And they would have been really disappointed if they hadn't come away with at least three points. They've come away with seven, and they're right back in it. Conversion is good, and it's a single-point game. I'm not, I don't know if there a better side in the Guinness Pro, or certainly even Europe, that can sit... 10 metres from the opposition try line and just phase after phase after phase and keep building, keep the patience. Because as I was saying, to protect the ball, it takes unbelievable technique to cover the ball without giving away a penalty and also to get in the, to beat, to win the shoulder competition. I don't think I've ever seen a side as well, just a gen general point on Leinster that can score points so quickly. You know, there's some sides that, it, it, okay, they've had to graph their 31 phases, but there can come a time where they get the ball back here and they score again, then they score again. And that's what you have to cope with at this Leinster side. What a take that is from Scott Cummings. A swirling breeze sent it straight over the head of Jack Dunn, but it was a brilliant field from the Glasgow second rower. In goes Fraser Brown. Now can they find a, a riposte straight away before half time, get themselves back in front here, potentially Glasgow. Hastings. Batty. And there's Sander Fagerson there for Ali Price and the big guns line up, queuing up, Cummins again. Rock, no has now seven. Off your feet first. Use it. Johnny Gray takes it on. Fagerson, Harley there too. Devin Tono is looking to extract himself from the situation. Two minutes to half time. Eight, six, four. Single point game, three tries, two for Leinster, one for Glasgow. Gray again, red by Tracy, good pickup. Six, seven metres short, Sean O'Brien's got his hands on that. And now he's taken out of it, almost. Batty again. Glasgow clear out is good, this is very promising. A little bit of your own medicine here from Leinster's point of view as Glasgow keep it in tight with the likes of Cummins there Behind again on the carry right. up to five metres. Price waits. Use it. Batty to his left. Patient and purposeful. Will there be penetration? He's isolated. He's very isolated. No! Sir! Peter Horn manages to get it back. Ali Price on the short little pass. No way through on that occasion for Brown the hooker. Now they go out the back door, Hastings over the top, oh that's lovely, brilliant delivery and Tommy Seymour will not miss from there. This is a really good game of rugby developing between two sides, playing extremely well. That is, uh, we've got the perfect angle up here in the commentary box, I was just calling out for that ball over the top, but it's such a, so yeah, risky, if he gets that wrong, Dave Carney goes the whole length but he's got it spot on. What a pass off the left hand here from Adam Hastings. And that's what I talk about his decision making at the line. It's become so much better. 
Yeah. Tommy yeah. Seymour yeah. reads yeah. it, and what a finish. But it was like one of those diagonal oh, cross-field right, kicks a GA player, a soccer player might do, just knowing where he's yeah. running into, floating the ball into if that you space. you wait until the 40, you won't restart. Do you want to hold the ball for you? It's, it's, it's one of those ones where you're, when you're piling on the pressure, like we know that Leinster are happy to go up to 30, 40 phases. On the five. Lots of other teams on become the impatient themselves and they no, the when to release that ball, yeah. when to actually go okay. wide. And that was an excellent example of when to do it and over. keep the averages, the law of averages on their side. Yeah, but I also think that Glasgow, with the way they play, and it's sort of quite, you know, Leo Cullen spoke about it beforehand, quite, can get quite loose when it gets into multi-phase. They need to score within 10 phases within maybe 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 six phases Leinster can go the 30 phases they've got they've got all their, their game covers uh, everything really really entertaining 40 minutes of rugby and this will be the final act of it from Adam Hastings really difficult conversion attempt didn't really strike it as he would have liked he tried to keep it low but what a game we've had what a 40 minutes at the RDS yeah, yes, in Dublin 18 points to 12 the halftime score and the overtures were coming into this game that it would be very very delicately poised and so it is we've had the two Carney brothers on the try score sheet for Leinster we've had Sam Johnson and Tommy Seymour for Glasgow halftime at the RDS Leinster 12 the Glasgow Warriors 18. Welcome back. So six points, the difference at half time in favour of the Glasgow Warriors, who, as we've been saying all afternoon, are doing their level best to go back top of their conference and stay on course for that home semi-final. Can Leinster in the second 40 minutes do their arch rivals? Munster a little bit of a favour. It's Munster who are top of the conference as we speak on 73 points, two points ahead of the Warriors. Munster would dearly love a home semi-final. Sean Cronin is in, James Tracy is off, and Keane Healy is in, and Tyke Furlong. So, the three that we fancy will start in the Leinster front row next week against Toulouse have been uh, thrust into action here by Leo Cullen. There's Ross Burt, on it goes to Henshaw. Devon Toner. Confirmation of those switches. Here is Ross Burn again, away to Sean O'Brien. Tackled by Peter Horn, who was uh, brought in during that first half for Sam Johnson, one of the two Glasgow try scores. Tommy Seymour with that finish right on 40 minutes putting Glasgow back in front. Robbie Henshaw, he's carried well today, a little bit loose towards Dave Carney. 
the two Carney brothers Advantage, just the on the score sheet this afternoon. Advantage over. Interesting to see how the sides cope having turned around. Leinster now into this wind, of course, substantial wind as we keep saying. There's Larmer. No. Jack Dunn protected that pretty well. Ross burned flat to the line. He's always available, Keelan Doris. You holding him there. Chamani. Scott Cummins tackle. endeavouring just to try Release. and rip that clear from the tackle. Doesn't quite manage it. Release! And there's Tag Furlong's first intervention. Ross Byrne. Doris again. Fraser Brown up to make the tackle. Cleared out by Keane Healy. Now Rob Carney hits the line. Larmer at scrum half. Good take from Toner out in front of him. A great defensive read from Johnny Gray. He was only inches short. Toner just got his big limbs out to get a hold of it. Now O'Brien. Larmer, a little bit of space to get those feet moving. And he does get beyond the first tackle. That of Kyle Steen back on the inside. Matawalu was there. O'Brien to burn. Taken on by Sean Cronin. What can they manufacture here? Difficult one for uh, Rob Henshaw, but again, it's about the good read this time from Tommy Seymour. It's unusual, Connor, that uh, after 40 minutes rugby, you've actually only won scrum. This is the second scrum in the match, and what's more unusual is you replace your entire front row after having only one scrum, but what a front row Leinster have brought on. And again, very comfortable in building phases. The last mistake, obviously, leading to this scrum, but well into double figures and phase building. Yeah, the defensive set from, from Glasgow really good, you know, just keeping their shape well. And there, Tommy Seymour just making the read, saw they had the numbers, came in from the outside, blindsided Robbie Henshaw, uh, and an easy, uh, an easy opportunity there to get the ball back. But I think what's interesting in the start of the second half, Glasgow have come out. I said, uh, I said to Liam off air, I said, are they going to, how are they going to approach it? They're going to kick from deep. It's exactly what they've done. Adam Hastings' first two opportunities, he went for the kicks, but they have to kick better than he did. The yes. two kicks he made yeah. weren't effective. They can't do that with his back three of Leinster. Yes. Yeah. Work on the gap. We had one scrum in the first half. It was also. No, it wasn't in the gap. No. <laughs> Work. Work on the gap. Marius Mitreus, a scrum analysis of that one scrummage we have was it was so-so. I wonder how many uh, names he's put on his travelling squad for the Rugby World Cup. A lot of rugby to be played between now and then, of course, Connor. Absolutely, and uh, I'm sure he'll be enthused to see the likes of Robbie Henshaw and Devon Toner coming back. Particularly when Lancer have got these big games coming up, these massive knockout rugby games. He'll be happy to see the front row in there. I think about 185, 190 caps are there about between Cronin, Healy and Furlong. Penalty coming here. So you can see that once uh, Glasgow got the front forward momentum going and if, as a prop pops up, then the advantage is always given to the, the scrum that's in ascendancy. In this case, Glasgow got a great shunt and both the Glasgow loose head and Leinster tight head pop up under the pressure and the referee would typically give that penalty to the team going forward. Yeah, and you could see that that was a... The, the, they had a consented effort you know as soon as they got that scrum they know they've got the win they know if they get a penalty suddenly territory brings them inside the 22 which is exactly what Stuart Hogg's done absolutely right down to that 22 and that's a big fill a big psychological boost for Glasgow and particularly in, uh, and in that kind of company the, yeah exactly how many six stay 10 nine so a big opportunity here for Fraser Brown. That's a big turnover from Lancer. Good pickup from Gibson Park. Carried out by O'Brien. Ross Byrne now. Tremani. Rob Carney. Larmer. One on one with Hogg. Dinks one over the top. All on the points here. It's behind everyone. Tremani's over it now. Has he managed to turn that over for Lancer? He has. Top mark for Tamani for working hard. The bouncing ball always gives an opportunity. No one knows easy, exactly easy, where it's going. 
But as soon as he went to deck, Tamani was boom over it like a classic open side wing forward. Josh Murphy. Yeah, and look where that's come from. A turnover, Glasgow line out, and then the execution outstanding here. Jordan Larmore there just chipping over the top. And what's impressive here, that Maris Matreya for the first half gave the ball carrier a lot of time on the ball. But this time you could see the clear jackal there from Joe Tamani. Great work on the floor. There's the middle. And so Ross Byrne has on, put this down line, to the please. Glasgow 22. Black, open. Didn't endeavour to take too much out of it. Five minute line out with Sean O'Brien in midfield. Devon Toner, Gibson Park, Henshaw on the short pass to O'Brien. It's read by the Warriors' defence. Toner again. Gibson Park, this time he goes beyond O'Brien to Keelan Dorison. Ross Byrne is double hit. The line speed and defence has been very good all afternoon from Glasgow. You'd expect that. Kean Healy. Shrugging off a couple of challenges. Typical appetite for the contact and really good carry. Back inside. Doris Knight. He's had a very good game. He's stopped by Adam Ash. And Jordan Larmer is just down here in front of us getting very animated and impatient. He feels that he needs the ball quickly to score in the corner. Will he get it? And they go to Tag Furlong instead for now at least. There he is. Drifting infield now. Sean O'Brien. Oh, that's loose. Play advantage, scrum advantage. Big contact coming in. Sander Fagerson maybe just dislodged that ball from the Leinster Use captain, it. Sean O'Brien, in the contact area. Hogg. Advantage over. Had to improvise. And that's a measure of the advantage elements, over. and uh, Glasgow going to find it tough in this half to... combat these conditions swirling around now it was uh, definitely very much into yes. Glasgow's face in the first half but a little bit it's buffering around now in the second half a little bit more yeah he did really well there Stuart Hogg initially just needed a bit more composure I think he felt Gibson Park was just snapping at his heels and he was going to tap tackle him as he went to kick it but frustrating he only hit the 22 more. good take from Jack Dunn 20 20 20 move away Adam Ash has got to get out of there. It's there for Gibson Park. Henshaw this time. Back on the short side. Keen Healy took it. Gibson Park again. Leinster regather. Tamani. Gibson Park to O'Brien this time. Support from Torres. And they're queuing up now. Furlong. That's another good take from Jack Dunn. Release now! He's been very impressive on his first start this afternoon. Sean O'Brien head down, running hard and straight at Jamie Batty. So too Kean Healy. Takes two to bring him to ground. Ross Byrne now flat to Larmer. Larmer's got Matawalo and Hogg to deal with. Well taken on here by Cronin, got his hands away. Keelan Doris to Devon Toner. Brilliant stuff from Lancer, up to five metres. Ross Byrne is screaming for it. Glasgow come Just through, it's only a knock-on advantage. Knock on. No penalty. Gibson Park, Ross Byrne. Drifts one over this way to Larmer. Back in field he goes, good continuity Release again. Out. Up to 13 phases. Rob Carney into contact. Cronin, Release out. furlong there. Eight. Devon Toner two. Leinster queue up and look to find a little bit of space. Ross Byrne got his hands free, he gets the offload away. Now, Jack Dunn. Away six. And it's Rob Harley just loitering with intent on the wrong side. Gets away with it though, nothing doing. Just knock, knock on, on advantage. Advantage. advantage, Dave Carney it was in there. And now Gibson Park, Sean O'Brien. Away comes Josh Murphy. It was his line-out turnover about five minutes ago that Led up to this 18 phase move here. No hands, six, no! Cummins tackle on Jack Dunn. Counteracting, no, no, don't! Ross Byrne 
Little show and go, can't get beyond Advantage Matt Fagerson. Furlong. It's relentless. Energy sapping stuff from both teams. Great defensive effort again from Glasgow. That's a really important clear out there. O'Brien again. 23 phases. Well, we saw Benison make Leinster make 306 tackles, was it, last week? Glasgow making a huge amount of tackles this afternoon. Gibson Park around the fringes. O'Brien wanted it, didn't get it. Okay, right. The ball is there again, inside the five meter line. We're heading for 30 phases again. Can they find the score? They did on the last occasion from Rob Carney no, when hands, they were no. camped Don't inside that Glasgow 22. Kean Healy sizing up the options here. Every inch, every foot, every meter is good for Leinster, and Kean Healy made a yard or two. So too Devon Toner. Tyg Furlong. 32 phases, is there space at the end of it all? Well, well, well. You wait three years for a try and two come in almost identical circumstances for Rob Carney. He gets his second of the afternoon and again, Leinster just wear the opposition down over 30 phases and Rob Carney gets Leinster's third try of the afternoon. And you've got to give huge credit to both sides. Not only Leinster for getting the, giving the patience to get through those 32 phases, but Glasgow's defence at holding them out as well and forcing them to score out wide. But great composure from this Leinster side. They, are they don't know when they're beaten. They don't know when they haven't scored. And the end, Carney on the end of a flat pass from Ross Byrne. I know it's not a day for scrummaging because the skill set is so high, but the impact that the Leinster front row bench have done in those carrying around the corners, Tyke Furlong, Cronin making a break, looking for the offload, and Keane Healy, you're talking about tackling, Connor. It's impossible to tackle this guy. The first guy landing him, he just doesn't quit, and every yard he gains gives opportunity for someone like Rob Carney to benefit. But that's a Leinster front row bench that have come on and really impacted. Yeah, we talked about Keane Healy and his rampaging best. His leg drive is absolutely out of this. I mean, it's amazing. He just doesn't know when he's beaten, doesn't know when he's put down. He just keeps going, and it just brings everyone else onto him. Oh, the strike is absolutely sublime from. Ross Burt, and it's Leinster with their noses back in front. Three tries to two, 19 points to 18. Fascinating game of rugby here. But in many ways, Hugo, like Leinster haven't done anything massively creative. They've just been brutally ruthless around the fringes, gaining those one yards, clearing out, making sure that the ball's recycled well, and giving opportunity to the guys beside them. There isn't a massive amount of offloading or creative play, but it's brutally ruthless. Well, Rob Carney, before today, had managed only one try in five years. Now he's got two in the space of 20 minutes. Good day for the Carney household. What a kick that was from that man, Ross Byrne. Here's Cronin. You feel Boys these are the areas where Glasgow have got to be as aggressive as they've been in other parts of the pitch to force, make it very difficult for, for, for Glenster to get out of their half. And Leinster piling through, making life difficult. Sander Fagerson. And they tied it up pretty well there, Ali Price. Here they come again, Hastings. Keeps ball in hand, he's strong in possession. Sean Cronin stuck to the task. That's gone forward, has it from Fagerson. It's such a pity, wasn't it? Because Adam Hastings had made a quality line break and he was just running out of pitch space. He was hunting for someone to run off his shoulder, there was just no one there. A really re greater reward should have come from that line break from Hastings. Yeah, you could just see here the defensive scramble defence on the inside you see there just trying to block the inside pass did it enough 
to get in the eye line of Adam Hastings, but it was just here, there's under Ferguson comes, two-man tackle. Good work there from Tab Furlong. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's go. Well, this will be an interesting flashpoint after what happened over on the far side with that Glasgow penalty. Gap was good. Work on like that, okay? No, the last scrum, uh, it was an actual uh, Glasgow put in, so in theory, seven against eight. This time, Glasgow have a full eight to pack down. Big moment for Leinster. Crouch! Okay, listen to me. You need to get, you need to stay straight. Show a little bit more shoulder. You need to go in. Don't go look for head to head. Okay. Work, work this out. Let's go. Let's go. Great work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Good balance, boys. Let's go. Let's go, boys. 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 Bind. Set. So, Gibson Park feeds the Leinster scrum. 19 points to 18 they lead. That's a quality platform for Leinster. Henshaw again. Gibson Park. Assessing the options. Electing it not to kick into the strong breeze. They go instead to Ross Byrne and he gets it away to Rob Carney. And he finds his brother Dave Carney. Three tries between them this afternoon. Release now. And back it goes from Josh Murphy. Gibson Park to Keane Healy. Ross Byrne. Henshaw. Good tackle, Fraser Brown. Burn again. Not held. Doris not held in the challenge. Cronin. Tackled by Horn. Head down. No. From Tyg Furlong. Henshaw moves it wide this time. Dave Carney. Cross comes Kyle Stain to make the challenge. Through goes Rob Henshaw. Glasgow player on the ball is uh, missed it right under second the eyes time. of Marius Mitrea and Matt Fagerson's not going to get away with that. Number eight, second time. He's been biting yeah. on a number of occasions, Fagerson at the breakdown. He's he, he's he's been visibly disappointed when he's not given the credit for yeah. it, and I think he just hunted too much there. He's that's more frustration than Me anything seven, else, not getting the reward, and he knows he did wrong. Yeah, first bite is okay, and then he just keeps on going at it. But what, I, what I've noticed about Leinster, we talked in the first half about not having options. They seem to have completely shifted in the second half. Options all over the place, out the back, flat balls, tip-ons, far more creative. Well, Sean O'Brien is going off, okay? so too Robbie Henshaw, Kieran Frawley is coming in, and Max Deegan also. So the captain has gone off, so I wonder who is taking the armband. Good. There's the middle. Many leaders still on the pitch, step. obviously. Yeah, you wouldn't have step, to look step, too step. far beyond uh, Devon Toner in your picture. <laughs> so many options. Uh, no, no, no. Step. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, you got a point. Step, now, step, step, okay. You slowed it down, step. Now. Interesting to see how Frawley slots into midfield. We've seen him at fly half, of course, in his normal position and indeed at fullback this season for Leinster. And he's going to play in the midfield. Penalty coming here. Sean Cronin carries it on, and now Jack Dunn has got his hands on it. Yes, advantage. Keelan Doris again. They're making good progress here. And on they go. Really good work from Leinster. Step back, step back, step back, step, step, one stop, 
Ball is there for Gibson Park. Frawley. Burn. Oh, he slings one all the way out to Larmer. And he says, go ahead, take on your man. And he does. And he gets it away to Rob Carney. And now Dave Carney. And Carney, can he get in? And the Carney brothers are running riot this afternoon at the RDS. It's two tries a piece now for Rob and Dave. And Leinster have their bonus point. You were looking there what position Kieran Frawley would have stepped into, but that is a quality balancing of assets. Frawley takes the ball on, and right behind him is Ross Byrne. Two brilliant, dif two brilliant distributors that give opportunity for players wide out. I think Hogg did excellently to stop Larmer initially, but then the wave of blue jerseys that came in, it was just too much for Glasgow to cope with. Yeah, and how many times have we seen that wrap around there from Leinster? It's slightly different to the traditional one we see with Johnny Sexton. But it was Peter Horn who stepped in in defence, who created the space out wide, gave Lam Jordan Lamour a bit of space to create out here. But from here, they still had a lot to do. And the two Carney brothers combining well. Dave Carney with a finish. I'm sure they're having a little sideline bet as to see who's going to get the hat-trick first. That's what we talked about beforehand as well, about the Leinster players coming off the bench and just stepping into the, into the structures. You know, Frawley comes off the bench, puts in the perfect pass out the back. It's not always easy. It looks easy, but he's just performed it clinically. But, but Ross Burns left hand pass taking into account the wind to float the ball into the bread basket of Larmer is pretty pretty quality pass too. Yeah, we gave Adam Hastings a credit for his pass over top. That was equally as good there from Ross Burn. Very, very tight, difficult angle. We're right behind that one and he doesn't quite make it on this occasion. 24 points to 18, 29 tries now for Dave Carney, 41 for his brother Rob, four on the afternoon for Leinster, and this was really good, lovely finish. Yeah, a great finish from Dave Carney, he's so strong, so really uh, low centre of gravity there, just gets down, bumps off Matawalu, and manages to scrape in the try. And what a turnaround, 24-18 from 18-12 at half time, it's been all Leinster. So Adam Byrne is in. As Tamani takes the restart. Use it. So Rob Carney's not going to get his hat trick because it is he who has gone off. And number 19, Bruce Flockhart, replacing number 20, It's carried back. Use it. It's carried back nine. Gibson Park waits. Leinster have got their bonus point try. Two tries in this second half. Is there a way back into it now for Glasgow? Be careful. So much at stake for them. Much prefer, of course, a home semi-final. It's a pretty fraught and circuitous route to have to go through, albeit a home quarter final, but then Release potentially. Out coming back here for a semi-final against the current champions Leinster <clears throat> Price play on, play taken on, on by Scott Cummings Devon Toner with a challenge but Glasgow get the ball away lost stay back <laughs> changes in that Warriors front row as well now. A little bit of space just for a fraction of a second. Hogg, good tackle, good read. Easy, easy Solid lever. defense again from that man, Dave Carney. Right back, right back. And straight up the middle goes Sander Fagerson, Price, Hastings. Matawalu was screaming for it. Peter Horn goes through a gap. Max Deegan just gets a hand on him. Scrag tackle inside that Leinster 22. Just manages to bring him to ground. Strong carry from Hastings. Thumping straight into Sean Cronin. There's an advantage to the Warriors here. Matawalu. And if one player can take advantage of an advantage, Matawalu can't. This is a big call out because Time Glasgow... Off need at no least advantage. a bonus point looking at the table there stop for injury obviously they look for the win we're going back 
for a penalty. But a Glasgow. bonus point is crucial. They got to come out of here with something to keep their hopes alive at that home semi final. And not to mention, if they don't get the home semi final, if they play an extra match, Number they won't four, want that. Not no, and I think uh, the, the penalty here, they've got to take the three points. They've got to get it back to within three. There's every chance of a draw. The draw could be a massive result for Glasgow as well. You yeah. know, just sneak them in, into the. And also, you, th th don't forget they've got two tries as well. So they could be okay, pushing yeah, they get closer the for, a, for a bonus point on tries as well. So okay. there's all to play for. Every result for Glasgow, whether it's a losing bonus point or a draw, everything is going to stand in their favour. A lot of pain on Tyke Furlong's face there, isn't there? Yeah. Initially, I thought it was a, a clash of heads, but it wasn't. It was on the way down. He just twisted that left knee, and that after the contact with Fraser Brown. Yeah, send him in. And they literally have those. Those three have been absolutely brilliant since they came on the front front three replacements for Leinster. Peter Horn did very well. Again, he's very strong with that handoff. The penalty is over there. Number four not rolling away. Number four blue not rolling away. Yeah, allow. Yeah, slowing the counters down. Again, I think it's crucial they take three points and they come back using the wind and put pressure back in Leinster. Nine blue. Yeah, he's coming off now. I think he's going to scrum kick half, by the way, line. for uh, Leinster. Hugh Shulham is coming in, but this is going in the corner, I think. Yeah, it's an interesting decision. I, I did think it was slightly closer inside the 15. It is a bit wider uh, than I thought, but still, they you would have thought they'd go three points. And on the replacement for Leinster, number three, Michael Bent returns in the face of number 18, Ty Furlong. Okay, well, hugely important passage of play here, potentially, for Glasgow as they look to eat into this lead and potentially get their noses back in front in what is a crucial game, remember, for them. And that's a pretty good drive off that line. They must be over here. Marius Mitre goes around to have a look, but listen to the roars from that Glasgow pack as they drive over that Leinster line and they do have their try. I think it's Matt Fagerson who's going to get his name on the score sheet. Yes, indeed, it's the number eight who comes up with the ball. There we were thinking conservatively here in commentary, thinking three points to get, to, first of all, one step towards the bonus uh, yeah. point, but this Glasgow team are much hungrier than that. And they fancy their chances. That's a quality line out. And it's a super line up mall. Leinster had no chance in any shape or form to slow it or to disintegrate it. Yeah, absolutely no question about that. Yeah. And you have to say the way that this Glasgow team play, they are, they do like to go for the driving line outs. They do like to go for the corners when there's an opportunity for a three point. So they got their just rewards there. And what a kick this is now for Adam Hastings. Well, he's been very good this season. His percentage is usually hovering just above 80%. Conditions could barely be more tricky. And he struck that absolutely beautifully. Really well worked in from that right-hand side from Adam Hastings. And Glasgow are back in front. It was no coincidence that Johnny Gray himself was the target in the line-out. We've mentioned him a few times, but he has been phenomenal around the fringe, around his swallow-up tackles and just soaking in blue shirts. Yeah, what they've done well, Glasgow, today is every time they've got an opportunity, we've seen them for the last 20 minutes, they've been defending. You know, Leinster have had the ball, they get an opportunity, they get down in, in the 22 and they take it. Yeah, it's very... Intriguing to watch, very delicately poised, like two real heavyweights ball just now. taking turns to batter the other one on the ropes, and it's when the opposition can Look, come back with a counter now. punch like that that makes it really fascinating. Use that. Wait. I Hugh Jones think a ball in. became a rock, but it did there. George Horn in at scrum half now for the Warriors. Seven tries in the game, and crucially, Glasgow need to get their fourth. 
Plenty of energy off the bench from Flockhart there in the carry. Hastings now needs to get away from Keane Healy. Pops one out the back, and that's the, the element of risk and reward about Glasgow's number 10 that makes him both compelling and it's sometimes frustrating if you're a Warriors fan, I'm sure. But why are they playing the game in this half? Release, Blue! I totally agree. You've just... Uh, Backwards. Oh, he's lucky there as well. They've just got to play down there. They've got to play territory. Use it! The breeze at their backs, and it's there for Alex Allen. And, th and that's not being conservative by nature. That's just being... You've, you're ahead on the scoreboard. Here we go. Stop! Stop! Blue! Blue cap. Okay. Straight down the middle. Really difficult one for Larmer to take. That ball moved in the air. Watched it all the way. Took it really well. And away he goes. Taken on by Bent, back inside it goes from O'Sullivan. Frawley quickly on to Carney from Larmer. Let's just jump across to the far side because John Fogarty has been very no, patiently no waiting to talk to oh, us. Uh, single point game, seven tries on the board. John, what do you expect is going to happen over the next 12 no, minutes? Anyone's game, right isn't now. it? Uh, it certainly is. Um, <laughs> the, way the, the way Glasgow are playing at the moment, um, you could expect just about anything. Um, you know, they're, they're continuing to play in their own half. Uh, you know they need to keep playing to win this game. Um, for us, we need to make sure we're, we're putting more pressure on them when they have the ball. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be an exciting finish, I would imagine. Uh, let's hope it stays the way it is. Or let's, sorry, let's hope we get over. Let's hope we get over the line. <laughs> I can see okay. you've been a busy man. There's been quite a few injuries. You've been in and out of the okay. pitch. Um, listen, uh, great day for the Carney so Not far, gone. sharing those four tries. Um, good to see Rob getting back on the score sheet, but also very rewarding from a Lancaster point of view to go through 25, 30 phases, John, and, and still have that ruthless finish. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, we, we, we gave the guys a rev up at halftime. Uh, we needed a bit, we needed 10 more from everybody, um, and we, we did that early in this in this half. Uh, I think we need to, to get that energy back in us uh, to finish this game off well. And it is good to see some guys back, Dev, uh, Robbie, Rob, as you said. Um, you know, they're all looking healthy, so uh, yeah, not a bad thing. Yeah, and just final word on uh, you mentioned all the, the big guns coming back in, but what about young Jack Dunn on his first start to come into that kind of company? Devon Toner, Robbie Henshaw, he looks very, very much at home out there. Yeah, yeah, really, really happy with him. You know, he works so hard um, on the pitch, and he got through a lot of work in that first half. He, he'll learn to clean up little bits, but um, we're really, really happy with the way he's going at the moment. John, thanks for your patience and your time, as always. Thank much you. Much appreciated. In the meantime... John Fogarty's team very much on yeah, the back foot. What a little kick through that was from Glasgow. Yeah, we were crying out for territory. And that's where you just need yeah, that experienced head. Stuart Five. Hogg just off the edge, off the outside Drop. of the right foot. He lucky with a bounce, some might say. The gap is good. But brilliant attacking play. The, I tell you what was good about it initially was that every single pass was in front of the man running onto the ball. And I know it sounds obvious and I know it sounds easy. But exactly what they did. Well, that's loose. Referee's playing an advantage here. Did that go forward off a... Just a knock-on advantage. Well, I think the Glasgow are suggesting that the line-out throw was done from inside the pitch. Rarely is that picked up. No, wait. Use it! No, Sullivan Stay. waits here. No. Advantage over! Yeah, and they're not going to get themselves quite out of trouble no, just yet, line. Lancer, make because they're still make only line. six, seven metres out. Exactly the part of the pitch that they want to be. So, so Sean Cronin, like his toes are on the pitch. Now he's actually on the pitch. So there is an argument. The oh, law okay, states uh, that you you can't actually can't do get, that. Get on point, can't work, uh, you also wonder what uh, the touch judge is doing because that is. Yeah, well, that's John McEnroe stuff, you know. Did 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 <laughs> Wimbledon in the late 70s? Hey, stay ten. Fraser Bryan. In these conditions again, that's very good from Glasgow. Very tidy, good communication, and they've executed it particularly oh, well. No. Oh, wait. From a lot of similar position from where Matt Fagerson scored their try just a short time ago. Can they find another one now? A crucial one, a bonus point try, and potentially one that would deliver a win here and a win they need. They're only inches short of the try line. Peter Horn, I think it was, on the carry on that occasion. On the follow-up, can they get the ball down there? A metre short. 
Michael Bent is there for Leinster, just trying to sandbag that try line. These are huge moments in Glasgow's season. Oh, and they find a way over for the try. They get the bonus point try. And Glasgow edge further in front. And it's the other Ferguson Sander this time that gets the try. And that could be a crucial moment in the game and in the business end of this season for Dave Rennie's Warriors. I just think that Johnny Gray did exceptionally well in that lineup mall, setting it up, controlling it all, and giving the platform for Glasgow to keep going. They kept their shape uh, as best they can. Leinster yeah, did brilliantly yeah. to bring it down initially and to disrupt it. But when you got a player of that physique, Fagerson, yeah. that close to the line is very difficult to stop him. And how big a try could that be for, for Glasgow? Two points behind Munster at the moment. Where you are. If they go on to win this game, that's five points, three points clear at the top of Conference A. That means next week, even against Edinburgh, you know, they could afford to lose the game and get a bonus point yeah. unless, unless Munster went and got five at, uh, at Connacht next week. So it's all to play for, but crucial that they've got that bonus point if they win. And again, it's a difficult kick, but he's been very, very good this afternoon. Adam Hastings, and that's another very, very nice strike indeed. And it just stretches out that lead. Time running out now for Leinster, and it takes them beyond a single score. So they're looking pretty good now. Eight tries in the game, four apiece. It looks like Glasgow, in the box seat. Glasgow have a massive tactical decision to make. Where do they play the, the last seven minutes of this match? Yeah, because it's almost like a shot to nothing for Leinster, as we said. There's much more on the game for Leinster, for Glasgow rather. Leinster really just trying to maintain their unbeaten record at home. Meanwhile, we've had a we've had Will Connors come in off the bench. That's the 56th player that Leinster have used this season. And great to see him back. He did his ACL pre-season against Newcastle, you may recall. So his first action of the campaign. Ross Byrne. Carried on by Keelan Doris there for O'Sullivan. Frawley now. Tamani. Advantage over. And Glasgow quite happy through Hogg just to thump one downfield. And that is exactly, exactly where they need to be. Well, as soon as that ball was turned over, Dave Kearney was sprinting backwards, knowing what Hogg was trying to do. He was trying to get himself out of a dungeon before he, he, he diagonal kicked it. You might see it in the, in the monitor here. Kearney is flying down the tram tracks and just misses the ball by inches. Quality kick. Yeah, I have to say, he's judged that, whether on purpose or not. He just wanted to get it down there, over the head of Kearney. As soon as you turn the wingers, they're, they're under pressure, and he did exactly that, Stuart Hogg. So across goes Sean Cronin. Fraser Brown has gone off and Grant Stewart is in. Devon Toner has taken the Lanster line out. One stop nine. Well, we thought it would be entertaining, we thought there would be tries and that it would be high scoring and it's uh, ticked all those boxes. Glasgow Duncan, having conceded Duncan, two tries to go 24 points to 18 behind have hit back with those two no, Ferguson no, tries no, Matt and Zander no, no, no. and once again we're looking at the possibility if not probability that it will be Glasgow with a home semi-final and that of course would eliminate the possibility of them having to come back here no, for a semi-final which means the next time they see Leinster it could be in that final in 42 days time in May the 25th quite a few things to be settled between now and then though Don't kick. kick the ball there was a boot attached to that Number I think it was that of uh, the ball in the rock. Peter Horn can't do that Leinster penalty yeah, one thing that Glasgow don't want to do now, uh, despite kicking into the wind, is give away penalties, just give away easy territory, give an opportunity for this Leinster side. I said earlier in the game, they can score points quickly. You do not want to let this Leinster side score in the next minute or so, because 
Quickly. Make for a grandstand finish for the neutral, step, but not for step, this Glasgow step, side. Step, step. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, we've seen sides come here and, and the mind goes back to Connacht at Christmas. They were in Taco. this type of situation, thought they had the game won. And then Leinster scored a couple of tries in quick succession in the dying embers of the game. They play the full 80 minutes. Bent takes that one from O'Sullivan and he makes uh, a yard or two. Ross Byrne to Cronin. O'Sullivan quickly recycled for Kean Healy. No heads out. Tremani options over the top. One of them is Frawley, who just accelerated really well onto that pass to make sure that Glasgow couldn't get it. And away goes Max Deegan. Will Connors is in there in support. It's there for O'Sullivan. Here's Frawley, Keelan Doris now. Burn on his outside. Good tackle coming in from Hugh Jones. Are we to get a grandstand finish? Alex Allen over the ball, can't get his hands on it. Worn by Marius Matreya. Here come Leinster again, the champions fighting back in a bid to retain their unbeaten record at this venue this season. O'Sullivan has a little bit of a snipe through on his hands and knees. Healy, poised and ready. Support is there, tackle from Flockhart. Leinster inside, five metres, Devon Toner plays, scrum half, Ross Byrne out the back, they go. Frawley, there's an extra man potentially in Adam Byrne. Pass didn't come from Deegan. Because Peter Horn, I think, trapped the ball, great second match on. Nah, did that go forward off Devon Toner? Run. Referee says it's gone back, it's still there for Leinster. Yeah, it was a good tackle from Horn, just wrapped up his man, no way through. Release out. Is there to be late drama in what has been a compelling game between two great sides? Glasgow have poured through and they turned that over. 79 minutes on the watch and that should be enough to seal the deal for the Glasgow Warriors. But look at this, they want to run from inside their own 22. Hogg, and Hogg still going. He had support on the inside. George Horn was waiting. The pass didn't come. Not to touch options. Oh, goodness me, it was there Scramble for the Warriors, and Hogg knows it. I'm not sure, did he know? Did he get a call from George Horn on the inside? I don't think it would have mattered there. The turnover, you could see, I think it was Fagerson came in, turned the ball over, but George Horn on the inside as they counter-attacked. Time off. Here it is, he makes the break. He did definitely, definitely looked on the inside. You thought he's going to give it. There, he had a quick look. But he decided to go himself. George Horn was under the sticks. And ultimately, I suppose, in the final analysis with uh, what have we got? Well, we're pretty much at the 80 minutes. I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. A short stoppage in play here. There's any amount of candidates for a man of the match this afternoon. It's been a, a pulsating game with eight tries. And let's hear who Liam Toland and uh, Hugo Southall between them are going to give it to. Well, as you, as you said, eight tries that dictated the top of Conference A, without a doubt. Munster must be sitting there okay. watching this in glee in many, many ways. The Kearney brothers were superb. So was the Leinster front row when they came on. But for me, the Guinness man of the match was right in the heart of the trenches. Johnny Gray throughout, defensively, was absolutely awesome. And in the line-out and the line-out mall, he was especially dominant. A quality performance from the big second row from Glasgow. Yeah, Johnny Gray, absolutely outstanding. What, what was so effective is, is when they needed him, when they needed his, his physicality, he just upped his game another 10%. And especially in the second half, when they were under the cosh, they were under the pump, 24-18 down, he came to the four again. So Johnny Gray, his other guy, Ali Price as well, has had a really good game, controlling things at nine, Adam Hastings, but Johnny Gray, the outstanding candidate. And a warm yeah. round of applause from uh, quite a few of the Leinster fans underneath us appreciating what has been a, a huge shift by Ron. He's now played 101 times for Glasgow. And it's going to be... You know, like huge credit goes to the swashbucklers. But when, you're, when the scoreboard is going against you, you need some of the big guy to stand up around the fringes and keep knocking back jerseys. And he was just, he's tackling, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly in high into double figures. But it's not just tackling, he's knocking guys back every time. Keelan Doris back, it goes from Devon Toner. 
He shipped a pretty heavy challenge there, Toner, as Lorimer looks to make something from this. Stay on your feet, run! Kieran Frawley comes away no. with it. A word of the new combinations from Leinster as well. Great to have Robbie Henshaw back and Devon Toner. Like, Leinster have earned the right of their home semi final some weeks back. So, this is about getting their combinations right. And a lot of them, Sean, a lot of them, this is a really important match. Obviously, they'd like to win it and disappointed they didn't. But to get those units back out on the pitch again is a big plus for Leinster. Yes, ultimately, it's going to be a rare home defeat. First of the season for Leinster. And they're still looking. Hopefully, rather than expectantly, you feel from this kind of position for a, a score that would bring a losing bonus point. Big game next week, not too far from here in a European semi-final, and then they're going to be back here for a Pro 14 semi-final. Can they possibly do the double-double? Glasgow will have a big say, you feel, in the destination of this season's Guinness Pro 14 title. They would love to be in the final. And they're going to have the final say here, or are they? Marius Matreya wants to have a little bit of a look at this. Oli. Has George Horn scored yeah, just check a fifth the, try? The I have a feeling by his reaction, he, sometimes you're sort of a bit sheepish matches. when you score those tries, but he looks pretty confident. Yeah. He's the sort of guy, he's got serious pace off the mark. Just need to make sure his timing goes right. And he was lightning quick. Didn't see too much wrong with this in real time. Here he comes. Well, scrum half has the ball in his hands for a long, long time. The gentleman rules give you around the fringes a bit of time, but I think he's, he's OK. <laughs> well, let's see. Like, hands on there. He's, he's OK. Right, he's fine. Yeah, absolutely absolutely fine. fine. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Do you have an angle from the other side? Yeah, or? we're just trying to get that fee now, Marius. Bear yeah. with us. As yeah, I said, yeah. gentleman's yeah. rules yeah. would... Yeah. Yeah. Scrum half has a moment yeah. of time yeah. if you're a fringe yeah. defender. Yeah. But out there, you're OK. Yeah. Marius, have a decision. You have a decision, Oli? Yes, you may award the try. I may award the try, so yes. he was onside yes. at the moment when the ball was lifted. Yes. So no offside, so I may award the try. Correct. Try is good, no offside. No offside, George Horn gets the try. They already had five no points, offside. now they have five tries. He's onside when the ball is lifted and outside the rack, so I may award the try. And that just drives home the Warriors' advantage. And if it is potentially a dress rehearsal for the grand final, well, they've laid down a little bit of a marker today, the Warriors. And over goes the extras, and that will be the end of proceedings. And Glasgow have come here, and they have done a job, and they have deserved their five points. That sends them back to the top of the conference. No favours going Munster's way from Leinster at the RDS this afternoon and Glasgow have destiny very much in their own hands ahead of round 21 and that all Scottish encounter with Edinburgh. They look a good bet to be at home in the semi-final and at times they had to do it the hard way but they've beaten Glasgow, they've scored five tries, they take the five points, it's Leinster 24, the Glasgow Warriors 39.